the content of this video is all about the nine facts what you should know about an architect in constructing a building or a house of course the first one is to get an architect architects are the guides to the buildings industry they assemble a team of eyelid professionals to set your projects in the right directions for your plans and designs get an architect kung hindi ka pa po nakakahanap ng architect um, you may ask the local architects organizations like the United Architects of the Philippines or search online social medias etc. Pero hindi ko po niya recommend itong process na to in getting an architect. Ang dami na pong nagpropractice nag ngayon ng ganitong services pero hindi naman sila lehitimo at lisensyadong architecto. So, making sure na you have to know their profile, the architect's profile, kung ano yung mga natapos din ng projects or it is best also to invite them na i-visit yung mga natapos nilang projects. You have to know their philosophy and specialization in order for you to know if they are perfect fit enough for your project. Kasi we have this slogan na sa arkitekto sigurado. Second one is conduct a land survey. It is important to know the exact measurement of the land because the land you will own will dictate the size, the shape, and the form of the project. Is it the lot rectangular or irregular shape? Is it located on a hill? If so, at what is slope? Information such as this need exact measurements that can be done only by a geodetic engineer. This process is called surveying. The third one is budgeting. Ito yung pinaka-critical in constructing a building. Kasi we have, to, we have to finish the project on time and then within a budget. Yun, yun lagi yung pinaka-aim natin as an architect or as a contractor, as a builders. Take note that a healthy budget project should consist of professional fees, permit fees, budget, builders fees, taxes, and other costs such as furniture and landscaping. Ako as as a project manager, kapag nagbabudget ako, I always allotted 5 to 10% contingencies kasi 5 to 10% contingencies for the for the for the wastage of the materials. The fourth one is the designing your project. We have the pre-designed services, the design services, the contract document, and the construction phase. We have these four phases of design. This is one of the most exciting steps in the process because it involves being creative and playful ideas. At this stage, the architect will prepare the plans and designs most suited for the project for client approval. It is important that a contract has been already been signed between the owner and the architect before reaching this process because planning and design really takes time, manpower, and cost. The number five is the engineering. Ito yung sinasabi natin um, allied services. After you are satisfied on the architectural design, the architect will be submit the plans to the engineers who will integrate their specialty onto the building. So, papasok na dito yung structural or the civil engineer para ma-ensure that the structure can stand firm, the sanitary or the, the master plumber to ensure that the proper flow of the sewerage and water lines within the, within the building or the, within the building or the site. The electrical engineer to ensure that the building is well lit and powered. The mechanical engineer to ensure that the building is cooled or heated. Of course, the electronic and communication engineer to ensure that the building is connected through a network kung may telephone lines, may Wi-Fi, intercoms, and security measures such as um, fire alarms and CCTVs. After the engineers have submitted their designs and analysis, the architect will merge them to create a comprehensive construction plan. The number six is bidding. Who will build it? So, sinong magtatayo ng, ng bahay mo or yung building? The architect is often the first option. After all, many architects offer design and build services. When building large projects, so kailangan na natin ng mga skills of the general contractors, the numbers of subcontractors, or the trade specialties. Bidding in simple terms is selecting the builder who can build it with the best quality 
at the cheapest cost and at the shortest time. Next is the permitting. All projects need to be evaluated and checked by the local building official. It is done to ensure nobody goes beyond their limits or give burdens to public welfare through their, through their projects. A few moments later. So, I have a question. How big is the house that needs a building permit? Does the three-story need a building permit? Of course, yes, because Every building project exceeds 20,000 requires a building permit. Number eight is construction. Many considerations are involved during construction such as the worker and public safety, logistics, availability of the materials, the lead times, scheduling, budgeting, and delays. Ito yung trabaho ng, ng construction manager or project manager. The building makes sure that, make sure that everything is on track and every issue is accounted for the involved within the guidance of consulting architect and engineers. The last one is the completion. A certificate of occupancy is needed for every building project. This is to make sure that no changes has been made from the, from the approved plan or if any that such changes are still compliant to the code. Make sure that your contract has a 30-day warranty or longer to remedy mistakes of a fault installation, the liability of the architect and engineers for the design alone, on the other hand, is about 15 years. So guys, yun na po yung um, nine, nine facts that you should know in constructing a building. If you enjoy watching this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up share and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you guys for all the support see you on my next video bye